Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen, the outdoor version. That's right. You know what? Tonight we have locked up on a mayfly hatch. Mm -hmm. So if you see bugs flying around, I don't like bugs. They might end up in the jambalaya. I have my special spray that Kelly made on, so I'm protected. Oh, we need to talk about that. You know what? She in made fact, a... we may address that tonight. A Little. natural bug spray without neurotoxins yeah. in it to shut you down. Tonight, we got several things. We never know from week to week what we're going to be hungry for. Right. This week, since we have a seafood connection now, mm -hmm. since you can get fresh seafood in Kentucky now. Right. So we went to E-Town, <laughs> and I was talking to Barry about some various fish that he had in. We're going to show you a very simple, you could do this on the grill, or you could do it outdoors like this. Yeah. But let's look at what Grandma sent in the mail. This is a, there's a story behind this. To, to most people, it looked like some cheap thing that you'd see at a roadside market right. where you pick it up. But there's a story behind that. Your grandparents were so proud right. of these. This is my dad's parents, and she had these in her hutch. Mm -hmm. We couldn't touch them. I didn't know what they ever were, but then all of a sudden, mom sends them to me, and it was the Indiana State Fair, and she told me that my mom told me the story about it, and they would. She didn't have that much money, mm -hmm. so they started with the large one in 1935. That's the year my dad and his brother were what born. Was a little creamer set. Yeah, this is, and it, then the next, like 1937, she bought another one, and 1950, they go to the Indiana State Fair. And you they, think you think about that, an adult couple mm -hmm. who would go to the state fair. And they couldn't get the whole set. By one piece. By one piece at a time. Right. We are so spoiled today if we don't get right. everything we want today. Right. She waited for years and years and years. It took her from 1930 35 to 1950 to get her three, to get pieces. three pieces. And I always loved it. And I just, mom gave me this. I'm like, oh, I love it. Is that not This is special? so neat. I want to put it in mine. So that's, that's just absolutely cool. Right. So anyhow, let's get to the cooking. All right, I'm going to put my pieces away. I don't want to break. Put your pieces away because those are special. Let's talk tonight about the perfect start to a lot of recipes, which are these three things. Celery, okay. especially when you're dealing in the Cajun world. Celery, onion, bell pepper. Let's okay. do like fingernail sized pieces okay. of each and then probably about a third of a cup. I've already got the oil. Right. Maybe a little too hot. And you can have those pieces whatever size you like them. We're just using olive oil here. And probably, probably give me some more. Bell pepper. Some more pepper and some more onion. So we're going to saute our onion, our celery, and our pepper. Then we're going to take uh, three cloves of garlic, put them in our little chopper. And again, every time we use this chopper, we have 80,000 people who want to know where they can get one. That's wonderful. Had some friends send that in the mail. Pretty and amazing. And they got it. They said you can get it from QVC, you can get it from Bed Bath & Beyond. I love it. Yeah, yeah, go ahead and dump that garlic. You can just Google pool chopper. You hate washing dishes. Yes, I do. This is a one dish meal. No, I love dishes. Oh, yeah, I want well, to use four dishes. Five. Okay. Now, when it comes to jambalaya, there's all kinds of ways you can fix it. There's things you can put in, there's things you can leave out. Some people in the French Quarter say you got to do this. Some people say no red beans. Some people say no tomatoes. Some people say tomatoes, no red beans. What That's I'm crazy. doing here is trying to make this a main course. But we always like a main course with our main course. Right. So we're going to have some fish. A couple along main with courses. It. So we checked out the trigger fish. And we could not pass that up. So we're gonna have we're gonna show you a simple way to do. You can do this on the grill, right. but it's really, really easy to do in your home as well. Pan seared fish is easy and wonderful. It is. And if you add a quick aioli to that at the end, maybe Yum. maybe a bourbon paprika aioli. Yum. Now at this point I'm gonna put a little Tony's in here. I'm gonna also take a little bit of this bourbon smoked paprika, which is made right here in Kentucky. Oh, you smell that? It smells good. That's already adding something special to that. Let's get a little cayenne pepper going. And this is up to you. And right, then we add our salt and pepper to taste. One thing that we were having a craving for is crawfish. Mm -hmm. Always like crawfish. These are already seasoned. Look at this. They're already ready to go. I like that. Peeled. Peeled and ready to go. Now let's also take our andouille sausage. Now we can Go ahead and put our rice in here. We're going to put about three quarters of a cup of rice in here. And again, this is just enough for us. And let's have some chicken stock. You know, the rice is going to take 15, 20 minutes to cook. Really, that's the only lengthy thing going on here. It's the rice. And keeping the bugs out of it. Yeah. We're going to go ahead and take probably about a half a pound of the sausage. And we're going to take about, oh, I don't know, three quarters of a pound of yeah. this crawfish. And we'll keep adding our stock. Now that rice is starting to absorb that chicken stock. We don't want too much in there. We want that to absorb it. So now from here, 
we're gonna take some red beans. I want those drained. Probably about seven, eight ounces on this. And you can cook those up ahead of time or you can cheat and use can ones. Now, Mrs. Farmer, if you will, I need some tomatoes. Okay. We're gonna opt for the tomatoes on this one. You could do it without them. I'm gonna probably go about seven or eight ounces. Of you know, everybody always says six or eight ounces. Nobody ever says odd stuff like seven. So you're gonna do seven. I'm gonna say seven, seven ounces. Seven or eight. Okay, seven ounces. So there we okay. are. And the great thing about this is you go along, you can kind of taste to see what you need. Now I need one bay leaf. Just throw it in there? Just throw it in there. We'll search for that later and get it back out. You know, the funny thing is about these bay leaves, where they grow in the United States, they're laying all over the ground. But you get buy a jar of them like that and cost you three or four bucks, oh, yeah. if not more. But what a nice, you smell that already? It does smell good. That adds a unique and wonderful flavor to that. Well, we're gonna let this cook a little while. I'll tell you one, one more thing we're gonna do. We got some hot sauce. Yes, we do. It's a hot sauce of your choice. Oh my. Mrs. Farmer, take a good. whiff of that. It smells pretty good. Now you say, okay, bay leaf. How much actually is that adding? I can smell that over top of everything else. It really does help give you that secret, wonderful Cajun flavor that is in a lot of things. So I think, Mrs. Farmer, that's about it. Now we can taste it, see where sure. we're at, heat-wise. Nice. Ooh. Pretty good. That's perfect. That's got a little heat in it. Yes, it does. But man, is that tasty. That's good. All right, now what we're gonna do is turn it down and let it simmer till the rice is done. That'll go 15, 20 minutes. As this sits and cooks, do you remember a couple weeks ago when we had the dance folks in? All right. The dance the sons. Yeah. They came in and they looked at our beehives, mm -hmm. all right? They took one of those frames that had queen cells on it right. and popped it in that other hive. So now they're gonna come back. See if it works. And see if it works, because man, I need some fresh honey. Those yes, are we do. We're ready. It's time. So let's check this out. All right, Andrew is back from the Dant and Sons right here in Frankfurt. And last time you were out, it was a pretty interesting day. You were talking about the National Geographic moment where the, we actually saw the queen come out, which mm -hmm. was fairly interesting. I, I remember when we were in your hives, you had uh, multiple queen cells, and uh, uh, depending on how many of them hatched, uh, we'll kind of see when we get in here in just a minute, of uh, your hive could have possibly swarmed two, maybe even three times mm -hmm. since the last time we were in it. Another issue we've had this year with such a heavy honey flow is um, hives becoming uh, what we call honey bound, which they actually fill up the hive with so much honey that the queen has nowhere to lay. If they're stopping up the hive with so much honey that she can't lay, it's that's not good because well, they can't can, you pull that? You can pull. You can pull those frames out, even if it's not capped yet. If you pull them. Uh, put them directly into a freezer so you can save that for them later mm -hmm. and put in a new a new frame so it gives her some space to try to lay but unfortunately sometimes you just don't catch it until uh, you know the, her pheromone levels will also drop uh, because you know she's not in full laying mode and sometimes they may even kill the queen. Now we got this hive going on over here with all the crazy activity and queen cells and, and but, but it was she's laying good. The queen in there is doing her job. Yeah. The orange hive that we visited last time, mm -hmm. we took advantage of the situation over here. Mm -hmm. There was no queen here mm -hmm. and you popped in a frame. So I'm anxious to see if anybody's doing anything over there today too. Yep. Uh, and came a little prepared today. If um, we get in there and we don't see much of brood or anything, we actually brought an extra queen just oh, in wow. case. Well, let's see what's happening, man. I'm, I'm anxious. All right. <laughs> What I'm doing here is to, uh, just getting a frame rest on here that if you don't have an extra pair of hands, you can set your frames right here as you're doing a little inspection. And what we're seeing here is we got honey, lots and lots of honey. And that's what you put on new last time. So is that, yes. is the, that the, pretty? This is all what we put on new last time. They've worked just about every frame in here. Judging by how far they've already uh, pulled everything here. If they don't go through too much of their stores, uh, there's a, a good possibility that you'll have a fall flow this year. The, the real thing we need to see is in the bottom brood box. Uh, we need to make sure that it's not completely honey bound and that she does ha the queen does have room down there to lay. And we still have some brood going here. You know what? 
we have I have not come across the queen cell yet, knock on wood. So that's a good thing. That means they have plenty of room and they don't feel like they need to supersede their queen. Looks like she's laying pretty well as in addition to that. And there's the queen running around here. She looks really good. So another big thumbs up for that hive. Yeah, this hive is doing very well. Uh, because they've done very well pulling all this comb out and the box is really heavy, we're gonna go ahead and put on a super, uh, allow them to go ahead and start drawing comb. Uh, I'm probably gonna put in a queen excluder just to make sure that the queen stays down into our uh, brood boxes here. I like them because they keep them out of the, keeps the queen from laying inside of your super. Even some of your bigger beekeepers, some believe in the queen excluder, some don't. It makes a lot easier come extracting time to not have to worry about working around the brood. And of course, we've got our frames here. I should also lead into this. Our more experienced beekeepers like to do, they like to come in and put another coat or sometimes even a third coat of wax on these. Uh, it's really hard to see in the daylight, but it really helps out the bees move things along. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to the orange hive, see if we got brood. If we got brood, hopefully we have a, a nice queen in there. Let's see what we got going on in this super first. And they are already packing in. Oh, we already got some capped here. And that's an outside frame, so that's a good telling sign that by the end of this honey flow, you may have a full super. I like the sound of that. Now, the thing we want to see here, Andrew, is obviously we want to see some egg laying going on, correct? Correct. Because that wasn't happening last time. That is an excellent sign. This is a top brood box, and we've already got brood. So we got a queen working somewhere. We got a queen. So one of those queens that we put in took. She went out, mated, came back. Now she's uh, working full tilt. Boom, we've reestablished this hive as a working hive. Yep. I'm going to take a look at the bottom here as well. See what we got going on down there. And this is exactly what we want to see. They're not stopping up the hive too much with honey. We got larva, we got cat brood, of course. So she is doing her job. Excellent. With this one, I'll leave the queen excluder off, primarily because that second brood box was not honey bound. Uh, they had honey in it, but they also had a lot of brood and there was still plenty of room for the queen to lay. Folks see this segment, they want to find out more about bees, how they do that. Well, they can call us, uh, and that phone number is 502-848-0000. And um, you can log on to uh, dedant.com and click on the shop tab and literally find just about anything you need. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for coming well, out, man. You're very welcome. Appreciate it. That is so simple. And again, you can do kind of anything you want. You can use chicken, you can use shrimp. Yeah, it was simple, I like that. But we really had it, we were having a craving for those already seasoned right. um, crawfish, crawfish tails. So we cooked it on our $20 burner. Mm -hmm. When we do our cowboy cooking, it's with pieces of charcoal or right. pieces of wood that's already burned. Yeah. So we want to make this accessible. When you go camping, Just pull these yeah, out. It's a lot of times it's, it's, it's a pain to have all these ingredients with you. Right. But man, if you want to be the coolest camp cook around, cowboy cooking dude out there, go to your campsite and set this yeah. up. When everybody's just come off the water, That's starving right. to death, and you give them this, That's right. they're gonna love you. <laughs> and that is smelling mighty tasty. So we're gonna come back in a second with an easy fish recipe. Now this is a, this is a way to cook any, almost any kind of fish. But if you're really hungry and you want something done quick, mm -hmm. You can pan sear you some fish. You do that for us all the time. I love oh, it. I love you can it. make it so delicious. Any kind of fish can be turned around. I'm going to show you some of my favorite seasonings in just a second. But what do you love to do when you got a leftover that you think about throwing out and then somebody says, did you know you could do this with this? And you've saved? That's right. What you were getting ready to throw away? That's wonderful. Not too long ago, Tamitha came over here, OK? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she had some coffee with her. Mm -hmm. From that morning. A right. lot of times we don't drink all our coffee or we walk off or forget about it. Right. So we pour it down the drain. Not Tamitha because she instilled in our brains, mm -hmm. she made more than one drink and we'll show you over the course of time. Say it's hot. Right. Say, but you want that boost. You mm -hmm. want that, it's two o'clock in the afternoon right. and you still got some mowing to do. Yeah, you still you. got some it's calves you. to feed. That's right. What do you do? Here's your cold, wonderful shot that you don't have to pay $8 for somewhere else. Right. You take it and you make it, and it's delicious. I promise you that. So watch this. Before you throw your next coffee out, try this. It's delicious, wasn't it? It, it is good.
All right, it's 122 degrees out. So what are we doing with a pot of coffee? Well, I do see ice and I do see milk and I do see Tamitha Boykin, who's gonna say uh, all kinds of neat stuff about, this is this morning's coffee. Yes. How often does that get wasted? Um, most likely every day. And that's a terrible, terrible thing. We yes, can't it is. We can't be wasting stuff. No. The caffeine's still in there. Yes. The taste is still in yes. there. And it's just sitting there and it's gonna be poured down the drain. It's screaming all the way down. Mm -hmm. All right, let's not do that to coffee because that's abuse. Yes. What would you do with your coffee if it's 122 degrees outside? Okay. We're certainly not going to plug that in warm it up. No, sir. We're what gonna, are you going to do? We're going to let it get room temperature. All right. Now we're going to pour it into this pitcher. I kind of know what you're doing because you kind of told me ahead of time. And I'm, I'm yes. kind of excited because, first of all, there's no waste. Mm -mm. You're, you're taking care of something mm -hmm. that you normally would get rid of. Mm -hmm. I like not to waste. Okay. Then what? Then we're going to add a half can of Caramel Eagle brand milk. Caramel. Caramel and coffee. I can dig it. And stir. One pot of coffee to half a can of Caramel Eagle brand milk. You know what? You could go through a drive through and pay $7 for this or, I'm just saying. Pennies. 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 Okay. You're going to refrigerate overnight. Okay. Okay. We're going to fast forward. We're going to pour this over ice. All right. About three quarters full. And then we're going to add a fourth of a cup of whole milk. Do you wonder if maybe the place where you pay $7, if maybe that's not their leftover coffee? <laughs> that's it right there? That's it. That is a caramel iced coffee. A, is this mine? Yes, sir. That is a Winchester Farmer's Market caramel iced coffee. By golly. Yes, sir. you got to be kidding me. Good stuff. Leftover coffee. Leftover coffee. And that didn't even get acquainted in the refrigerator. That's no. just right out of the pot, mm -hmm. right mixed up. Yes, sir. Nikki's looking at me over there like, I'm going to hand me some of that. Oh, my. Cool, refreshing, pick me up. Yes, no sir. calories? <laughs> just a couple. Just a couple. That is delicious. Thank you. You know, this is one of those recipes that's quick and easy. And I tell Nikki sometimes, we're getting ready to do something. I say, that's, that's too simple. She said, no, people want to know how to do that. Tamitha, that right there is outstanding. Thank you very much. And what do you call it again? It's the Winchester Farmer's Market Caramel Ice Coffee. By golly. Put by golly by in By golly. There. I like that better. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very that much. so easy. I appreciate it. All right. Here's some of my favorite seasoning. Obviously, I like Tony's. What do you I do? Love Tony's. You just put Tony's all over it. Yeah. Old Bay, the old standby. Now, you know what's really good? It's Tony's and Old Bay together. together. Really good combination. Paul Prudhomme. You can use blackened seasoning, mm -hmm. just like we did our striper up right. there in the Dutch oven. Here's one more. And I found this, I can't, it was some odd yeah. place in the middle of nowhere, Seged. Where's that from? It's from Hungary. We just okay. went to Hungary. So I think it's the yeah. third largest city, go away, bug, in Hungary. Mm -hmm. And this is their fish rub. You like that, Smell don't you? this, smell this. That does smell pretty good. So we're gonna take some of this, and liberally apply. This is fantastic, and you can come back with any anything you like. You like a lot of seasoning, don't you? Yeah, especially. Now, triggerfish is a wonderful, beautiful fish. Now, triggerfish, their hide, or their skin, I should say, that sounds funny, but is hard as a rock. You could dull a knife trying to get that in, and Barry explained it, said you could drag it behind a car and it wouldn't would not affect the texture hmm, of that skin. Really? It's like armor. You have to go in through the vent to cut that and get that out there because it's so hard it'll dull a knife. He made it look easy. But once you get in, now we've, yeah. we've fished for trigger fish and they are fantastic, beautiful, wonderful fish. We're gonna drop that into some hot yeah. grease. And here's one more thing that I made. It's an aioli. And I've already got that made up and I'll let it set for a day. But here's what you do. Take your three, two, three cloves of garlic. Take you about a quarter of a teaspoon, not a whole lot, of kosher salt. Smash that together till you make a paste. Then come back with some mayonnaise, about a half to a third of a cup, yeah. somewhere in between there. Mix that up, pour you about two tablespoons of olive oil and a tablespoon of lemon juice. Mix that up and put some smoked paprika in it. You like that? And you paprika. put that, you serve that with your fish and you got yourself something special. Yum. You don't want to overdo your fish ever. See that Yum. nice brown? That looks nice. It's all crispy, isn't it? It's all crispy. You want to get it just enough on each side where you know it's down the middle. And I want to, we're going to go ahead and eat a plate for this. Okay. 
Now, you talk about a beautiful looking dinner. That does look good. So here's a jambalaya, which could be a full meal for both of us, but like I said, we like a main course with our main course. Now we're gonna come back, just a little bit of lemon juice. I like lemon juice. I know you do. And then... That's delicious too. We're gonna drizzle on here. Are you kidding me? That looks pretty good. All right, look what we got here, Mrs. Farmer. Yum. Which one you gonna try first? You go ahead. I'm gonna try this. Cajun. I'll try the fish. Look at that fish. Now watch how that flakes. Mm. We didn't overdo it. Look how white that is on the inside and flaky. Oh my. All the crawfish are good in this. Really good. How's the fish? Ridiculously that's good. good. Isn't that good? That's a good combo. Cooking outside. Now that's mm. a meal. Mm. That's a meal. Ooh. A cayenne sneaking in. You go ahead and eat, and I'll talk about it. I can't it. stop eating. Talk about something Kelly brought down here the other day. We're very conscious of chemicals, so on and so forth. Right. You know, we're not going to stand up and scream about anything. Everything in moderation. Right. But I don't like some of these bug sprays that have chemicals in them. And they really Horrible. do stink. They oh, spray yeah. strong. So Kelly was looking online, and she found this on Dr. Axe's site. Here's what you use for a natural bug spray. And it works. And it works. And it smells good. And it works. Half a cup of witch hazel, mm -hmm. half a cup of apple cider vinegar, 40 drops of essential oils, that's eucalyptus, lemongrass, citronella, tea tree, or rosemary, and I think she used uh, geranium. And she brought and this over, and I stole it from her. And look you know what? It, <laughs> it, smells, it smells like bug spray, but it doesn't have the noxious neurotoxin chemicals. It's got a good smell to it. It's not as bad. And we had friends over the other night, and they all, look at like we all used it. But it's it, very it, natural. It worked. It worked. It's nice. And nobody had any kind of seizures or anything. No, and it stays right down here. And it smells, it smells, smells fairly good. natural. Okay, so that's our invention of the night. Yeah. Kelly looked up online. And it works. Thanks, Dr. It. Axe. So we're going to continue to eat every bit of this food. Yeah. But before we do, because we shouldn't talk with our mouthfuls, let's talk about the fact that that was a half hour show that went really quick. Yeah, it did. How do you become a Facebook friend? It's very difficult. That's what, right. what did you have to do to become Tim Farmer Country Kitchen Facebook friend? I hit like. That's it? Yes, that's You've all you do. No, I've done it I before. I think she's lying. No, I know. It's that simple. Hit like. We want you on there. We want to talk to you. Also, if you've seen one of these recipes and you know someplace, Mrs. Farmer, where there's 150 billion more, where's that at? TimFarmersCountryKitchen.com. Is not. Yes, it is. is recipes. Uh-huh. Is? Yes. How about that? TimFarmersCountryKitchen.com. There's hundreds of recipes on there. Appetizers. Right. There's all kinds of stuff. How-tos. Right. Go to YouTube. You can look at all our stuff there. Click subscribe. Anytime something new comes up, we will alert you of that. And it's all about good times, good friends, and good eats. I'm gonna eat again. And bugs crawling down my shirt. Give me some yeah. of that spray. Let me get a bite first. Okay. To order a cookbook, email timfarmerck at gmail.com.